Greetings and namaste YouTube. I'm Eve with The Baby's Booty. Today's project is an in the hoop project. We are going to stitch up this really cute, simple to make baby travel size wipes and case cover. So this stitches up, you can feel it's quilted. You can use cotton, you can use flannel as I have here. Um, very simple materials, very easy to make. So stay tuned and we'll go through this step by step and make it together. As I mentioned at the jump, today's project is going to be a completely in the hoop project. We are going to make this diaper wipes case um, and it's going to be made over here on our PR655 and unfortunately this project will not work on the PE500 or the 425, uh, the 4x4 machine nor the 770 which is the 5x7. On this project it requires the largest hoop that actually comes with this machine which is the 8x12 size hoop. So sorry, this particular tutorial is not for the smaller machines. However, for this particular six needle machine, this is an excellent project to make. Um, the design is actually from an Etsy store by the name of Hug Longer. And it is listed as a in the hoop diaper wipe case uh, project. So you can go over there, download the project after you purchase it. Um, and come right back here and we'll go step by step to make it. Now, I will let you know ahead of time, this particular project, I used flannel for my cases, the one I made yesterday and the one I made today. You can use cotton. Cotton fabric can be used with this particular project. You will also need some sort of batting to create the loft on the fabric with the quilting. So what I did, I used fleece, sorry, I use fleece um, instead of cotton batting. You can use cotton batting, which is normally what's used when quilting is being done. But in my instance, I wanted it kind of thin. So I just used a piece of fleece that I had cut down to the measurements that's required for the pattern. So if you've already downloaded your um, pattern from off of the Etsy store, then Stay tuned and we'll go right out to the cutting table and lay out the pieces to this project that you need. <laughs> For this project, you will need one piece of fabric that measures 10 and a half by seven and a half. One piece of cotton batting that measures 10 and a half by seven and a half as well. In my instance, I didn't use cotton batting. I just used a piece of fleece that I had left over from another project. It's just thick enough for this project. Also, you'll need two pieces of fabric cut to 10 and a half by nine inches. However, these pieces of fabric need to be ironed in half. So we'll take it and iron it lengthways. There we are, all pressed and ready to go. Also, what we'll need is wash away stabilizer hooped in an eight by 12 hoop. Now, the stabilizer that the uh, designer recommends for this project is the um, cloth feel wash away stabilizer. So that's what we have here. Already hooped and ready to go. So now that we have our supplies ready, let's go over to the machine. We'll go ahead and load the pattern. I've already placed the hoop on the machine. So I have mine stored in the machine and it's telling me that this pattern is too large for the frame for the pattern to go that way, which is perfectly fine. That's not how I want it to go. But now I have it loaded in the correct orientation. So the baby's name is here. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it just for aesthetics purposes so that we can see it clearly. 
the baby's name is here. And what I've done is I've added his name immediately after the quilting step. So I want to be sure that I choose the right color for his name. So I'm gonna go ahead and do sewing. And I have um, the light blue on the machine for the quilting lines. Um, I'm probably going to do the green for the baby's name and for the circle where we're going to do a cutout uh, for the hole where the wipes are going to be pulled through. So the first step is going to be the placement stitch. That can be any color, but I'm going to use my magic wand and I'm going to change it to a different color and it picked three, but that's not what I want because <laughs> I touched it. I want it to be five. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna program the stops in so that we can uh, take it step by step. So the first thing we'll do is do our placement stitch. Now that we have our placement stitch, I'm going to go ahead and put down the batting, or in my case, the piece of fleece, and line it up, of course, with our placement stitch. Doesn't matter up or down how you lay this, just as long as it's in the, um, within the lines. And you can lift it up and see where it's placed on here and make sure that it's a good distance o o over the placement lines. And now I'm going to place my fabric and you want this to be right side up. So where you can see the design clearly, not the back side. So the pretty side of the fabric, we want to put that down uh, over the top of our piece of fleece, or if you're using cotton batting, the cotton, cotton batting. All right. Now, some people will probably spray this to hold it in place with adhesive. As you see, I'm not doing that because it doesn't move around very much because of the cotton gripping uh, both the fabric and the uh, wash away stabilizer. So I'm not going to spray anything, but I'm just going to lay it here in place because here our next step is our placement stitches, which is going to hold this and tack it down. Now it's showing that it wants to do that with number two, which is fine. That's not going to hurt anything. So we'll go ahead and stitch that placement stitch. Now that we have the placement stitches in place, what we're going to do is take the hoop off of the machine. We're not going to unhoop anything. We're merely going to take this off because what we need to do is cut out the center hole uh, on the inside of this placement stitch, very similar to applique. Now that I have this off, it would probably be easier to do this at the desk or the table, but I'm going to do this right here so that you guys can see on camera. And you definitely want to cut through to the fleece or the cotton batting. And you want to get pretty close to your um, stitches in here and basically we're cutting out this circle and as I go I'm checking to make sure that I'm cutting this batting out as well
now that we're in pretty close to that line and in all honesty this is like the most tedious part of this whole project this this is about as bad as it gets <laughs> so it's a very simple project um, and I definitely appreciate how simple it is so now that we have the center cut out we're going to go ahead and put it right back on the machine Our next step is the actual quilting and the center satin stitch around the hole. So what I'm going to do is use my magic wand and change that to the actual color that I would prefer the quilting and the circle to be in. I did say green, but I'm going to do his name in green and I'm just going to do everything else in the same color as the fabric. So now that I have that selected, I'm going to go ahead and set it to stop and we're going to lock and load. Now that the quilting has finished, um, there are marks here. This is the placement lines for the top fabric, but I went ahead and programmed in the name. So we'll go ahead and switch his name, which um, is currently showing as three at number two, but we're going to change it to three, so that it'll be in green. Now that we have the circle, the oval rather, for the opening, now we want to add the opposite side, the back side of the little pouch. So what we're going to do is put this side on first. And you wanna make sure that the raw edges uh, face the outside and the fold goes to the inside and there is a mark here on the fabric to tell you where to lay that. So we're gonna line this up with that mark. And actually I'm gonna flip this over cause I want my turtles to be swimming in the same direction. So we're gonna line that up there. And now that I have that lined up, we're going to do the next color stop. And what it's going to do now is go ahead and stitch the next placement stitches for the next piece of fabric.
So now that that's finished, we want to do the exact same thing. I'm going to make sure my turtles are swimming in the right direction this time. And we're going to put the raw edges to the back side and the fold is going to be on the toward the inside up against this stitch line just like we did the first one so there's the stitch line there placement line rather and I'm going to put it there so now what we have is and that would have been cute if I could have lined that up actually I think I can it's going to be pushing it but I think I can because that looks super cute lined up Let's see if we can pull this off to match that. And now it's going to stitch the opposite side and finish off our pouch. And that's it. So now what we want to do is unhoop this and cut around the outside of the lines there. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to trim. And here's our pouch. Now that's going to be there, but what we'll do is trim it. So now we turn it inside out, poke out our corners. And there we have our super cute pouch now it didn't line up on the back side but that's okay I don't mind because normally we won't be seeing the back side and what I will do is go ahead I'm not going to put this in water I'm going to just trim this with my scissors And what I can do later is go back and use a, maybe a spritz bottle or something to melt away the rest of this. Or if you want to, you can wash it, rinse it off or whatever the case may be. It should dry, wash and dry very well, which is one of the other things I like about this. It's super cute. It's functional. Um, customized to your baby set that there and there we have our wipes pouch let's go find some wipes to put in here so we can see just how super cute that is so how super cute did this turn out to be now unfortunately I happened to realize that the wipes that I had in the little travel pouch I put in the other cover that I made for the baby shower yesterday. So I don't have another pack of wipes to have in here, but what I did have was some Pampers. These are size one Pampers. And the way the designer uh, listed this on her website is you put the wipes in first and then you can tuck spare Pampers behind the wipes in the same pouch and I actually did that I, when I gave this as a gift or the other one as a gift I put the wipes in and I put you know a spare pamper behind it to show how this actually worked and one other suggestion that I could come up with or that I came up with is you could also take the time to possibly put a little tab of velcro back here to help hold it shut but 
even with an extremely full um, pack of wipes in here and one pamper, it wasn't gaping when I gave it to her. So it even lays cleanly in the back and it just turns out to be such a super cute little gift. It was a huge hit at the baby shower. So I would highly recommend it. And as you see, once you get your fabric laid out and you go ahead and stitch this out, it shows 30 minutes total stitch time on this machine. Now, of course that doesn't include cutting it out and placing your pieces of fabric, but it's a pretty quick little stitch up that you can do that will give a gift that will definitely wow the crowd. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to make a diaper wipe case. Um, and as I mentioned, this pattern is available on Etsy. The link is in the description box below. As always, we appreciate you guys tuning in and watching our tutorials. And until the next time, we want you to have happy embroidering.